So by the end of this session, what we'll be discussing is uh, understanding uh, how campaigns are planned. Uh, we will go in detail in terms of uh, developing a uh, system, uh, following a, uh, a framework that has been um, implemented uh, and brought to you by uh, the IDM. Uh, I use a technical uh, framework uh, that will give you more of a clearer idea on how you could uh, well, it's more strategic in a way to plan your content. You would also need the first step is by doing a situational analysis. Any project that you're working on, any sort of micro project you're working on, you will certainly need to analyze the current situation. Um, and I'll go in detail how you can do that. Um, and then as well as that, setting yourself campaign objectives. Um, that will certainly lead you on the way. I do regularly emphasize on um, objectives uh, and your key performance indicators because they will set you uh, guidance uh, on how you can fulfill your project. And as well as that, understanding your campaign target strategy. Uh, I'll go in detail how you could certainly do that uh, further. And as well as that, using campaign creatives offers creatives meaning design variants, uh, designs that you will um, either use Canva, which I've discussed last session, Adobe Spark, Adobe Lightrooms, and also uh, um, uh, Snapseed. Um, you could use those platforms to create creatives. We could certainly do, as traditional marketers would do, scratch, sketch their ideas and pitch uh, to their uh, audiences, to their, um, to, to their clients and then develop it over time and um, yeah, make it more digital. Uh, I know Oliver is making, is doing designs at the moment. Um, so that is part of the marketing activity uh, is that you would design uh, by sketching uh, and then certainly over time uh, develop it by including um, um, designs that were used online and you further develop it over time. We'll also be discussing um, timing and integration of the campaign um, because there, there's also always a time that you could uh, integrate your campaign. Uh, so you can testing is it's a very good way uh, of understanding your campaign. By testing, um, you, you certainly get an idea of by looking at the data how that campaign has performed um, and data is really crucial uh, with social media especially a number of organizations will look into this uh, in great detail and try and make sense of it uh, and we will go into that to more detail uh, so Ben can I have the next slide please thank you okay so what is integrated marketing planning I'll tell you what that is, is it's integrating marketing planning and uh, certainly uh, considering every aspect of the customer's relationship. So managing the customer's relationship, having a regular conversation with them. And you do that by creatives and your brand, uh, your brand story. Uh, this will unify the customer's experience. So if you're actively on Facebook, Instagram, or either you're regularly on um, other social platforms such as Twitter uh, or Pinterest. Now, your marketing activity uh, will determine the relationship that you have with your audiences. Now, those you will refer back to your um, uh, insights, uh, which will be your data insights. So Instagram would enable you to look at your insights as if your Instagram business accounts are set up as a business account or either your personal account. Um, if you've got a creator's account or you've got a business account for yourselves, you will have the option to look at the data. Uh, the data will give you an idea of um, if you have posted a creative, um, how each of those creatives are performing. So if it's uh, for Instagram specifically, how is a reel performing or how is a, a, a post uh, on a newsfeed performing or Instagram, Instagram uh, TV. So those are all what we call in marketing villages. Um, they're all they're all little villages where all, uh, uh, customers and clients will go and visit 
to communicate and gain information from your accounts, uh, from, from you as a business. Uh, and regularly, they will aim to gain further communications from you. Uh, and, and you do this by direct marketing. Um, press releases tend to be perform really well with social media activities. Uh, traditional marketing, like I emphasized in previous sessions, uh, for instance, um, traditional marketing would be, for instance, radio advertisements, um, newspaper uh, adverts or press releases or uh, magazines. Um, those, those tend to perform really well. Um, also, within marketing performance-wise, um, carousels tend to do really well. If you've never uh, known what a carousel is, it's like a, um, it's like a slides. Um, but in a, in, a, in a form of a social media post and advertising regularly how, um, how you tell a story of your brand. It could be three to four posts all br brought in together as a, as a slide. And they tend to perform really well online. Now you could refer back to the data and see how your audiences are, um, you know, how they are engaging with it. Um, are they leaving a sentiment, whether that be a comment or a reaction. Uh, you could certainly analyze that data, put it in histograms, reporting, um, and this gives you a way to report back to uh, report on it and report on your actual activities. Um, and also integrated marketing communication requires you to give customers experience um, by using your data, again, like I say, and insights. You can automate your content as well. Uh, by using Hootsuite. Um, so if you're currently, if you want to plan in advance um, your content, you can do that each touch point. You can plan it, uh, for instance, for the week or the month um, to give you time um, throughout the week uh, to refer back to those touch points and specifically see how that post is performing with a video or with a picture, yeah? Um, and, and, and just refer back to it regularly. So that, that will crucially enable you to understand your brand a bit more, understand your audiences a bit more as well. Okay, uh, so next slide, please, uh, Ben. Thank you. Uh, feel free to ask me any question if you're uncertain about it and I can emphasize on it a bit more for you guys. So this, uh, this particular slide is, is how we can integrate the communication together. Now, the Institute of Data and Marketing uh, Communication, um, the IDM known as the IDM, they have a framework and they have, this, they have a six key steps to making you consider all aspects of planning. So number one is planning. Uh, if you follow this way, I'm certain that you will um, do well in your marketing activities. So by firstly plan, um, it's crucial. I'll go in depth on how you can certainly do that. Uh, then uh, certainly um, by planning, you can do that by setting the strategy and objectives. Yeah, and this is how you bring your objectives into uh, into consideration. And setting key performance indicators how you can execute those uh, objectives. So you just build upon your current objectives. So how you could potentially ex execute them. Uh, number two, data, okay, also known as big data, yeah, um, by understanding and targeting customers. Uh, uh, and, and you can better identify your customers uh, and, and understand them in real time, yeah, uh, by utilizing the use of insights um, on social media platforms. So I don't know if you've seen, but uh, you can use also download from Facebook a spreadsheet of data usage. Uh, I mean, well, the data reactions of, uh, and also um, how long each customer tends to be spending on your actual page, what what non-followers are watching your page and how you could potentially target them. And you can certainly um, look for actionable insights to sort of act upon those insights and uh, regularly communicate with your audiences, okay? Um, number three, the determine your media channels. Yeah, um, feel free um, to certainly 
advertise on further platforms, but uh, you will certainly need to um, refer back to um, how the performances are going on all those platforms uh, by testing, yeah? So your media channels, you will need to plan way in advance regularly by selecting the right channel at the right time, yeah? So Instagram tends to be really good in insight, so pictures, videos, yeah? Um, infographics tend to be really tend to be new to Instagram um, and people like engaging content yeah um, you could also use Instagram stories or Facebook stories to engage uh, you know on another level so you can look at the insights um, how are they performing um, you may even get more people that are not you following your page watching your content because they may come into their stream because they may be within your demographic and they may be watching your content. So, so it's always good to look at that, uh, that data and identify you know, what they like and then do it more regularly and they may convert to actual followers or potential sales if you're selling products. Yeah. Also, uh, uh, number three, your website. So again, by regularly up uploading on your social media platforms, guys, your SEO ranking will go up. Um, so depend. So Facebook and Instagram will certainly leverage what content you're putting out there and how people are engaging with it. And as a reward, your SEO ranking will go up uh, because Google and Bling and all those uh, other, uh, you know, websites will understand that you know you're creating so much attention on social media platforms um you know we want to sort of bring your content out to more audiences so as soon as your seo ranking increases that's when you start creating more attention to your brand and which could mean more followers more um more sort of people joining you uh, long term and potentially purchasing your products or services yeah okay so number five your creatives your creative insight is crucial um so determining maybe using uh, the power of um, videos tend to be really good and um, so you could certainly create a video really easy, very easily by doing reels um reels normal videos igtv um, and I'll go in depth on what type of platforms you could use to edit videos. If you use a smartphone, you don't have to be, have a high budget to make videos. You can make it on a smartphone, it's really easy. Um, short, short video uh, editors and certainly audiences will react to it. And you will see by referring back to the data, how that video is performing. And if people are liking it, if they're regularly engaging with it, make more of it. Um, so you target more people. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's really that um, you know it's that way will be more effective for you long term. Uh, so by producing that, you can certainly increase put messaging in your caption. Uh, so the message uh, will be very short, understandable content. Um, I wouldn't over sophisticate the, uh, the 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 messaging. Uh, because that's when you may not get a lot of attention because people want to gain information quickly. Um, so certainly look at that. So you can test it. You might want to put really sophisticated language or easier language and do A-B split testing. And I will go in depth in A-B split testing. All that is more detail. But you can you will see in the data, um, you know, how uh, content that is like really sort and understandable, how they perform via very sophisticated language. Um, you may get different age demographics that may um, certainly enjoy more sort of content-based, so written content. And uh, they may engage with that. More, more younger demographics, younger people, more affluent. They more engage with videos, pictures, uh, and they certainly perform with that more. Um, well, they engage with that more. So I would certainly consider that. Um, and again, yeah, I'll certainly consider that. And so testing uh, is crucial as well. Um, 
See, like I said, A B split testing is split two different variants. Yeah. And we'll go in depth to that as well. So, Ben, if, you, if I can get to the next slide, please. If you can do the next slide. Thank you. Okay. So, um, so like I say, crucial for you to as well is to conduct a, um, a competitor analysis. So your competitors are the ones that are operating in a similar market as you, yeah? Um, so for instance, other um, local businesses, uh, other charitable organizations, uh, they will be your competitors as well. Um, and identify, and how you do your competitor analysis is by doing a, something called a PESTL analysis or a SWOT analysis. Yeah, so you do. You, you can either write a uh, a short report, uh, or you can do a presentation on it uh, to give you sort of more guidance uh, and, and, and advice on how you could potentially target audiences and potential customers online. Yeah. Now you would need to analyze the political factors, and you can do this by doing desktop research, uh, by researching online. Um, on the internet, using Google, Google Scholar, uh, maybe referring to uh, newspapers, uh, referring to sort of blogs, forums, uh, that will give you more data, text data. Um, and then um, you can understand sort of the political, the economical aspects of that, um, the social uh, aspect. So, referring to social media data, uh, technological data. Um, so how, what kind of technologies they're using. You wanna understand your competitors. So um, if you wanna sort of certainly gain their, their followers, similar followers and for them to um, be following you and maybe purchase from you or certainly join your journey. Um, there's a way you can do that. And this is uh, a strategy to do that, an environmental aspect. So your competitors might be um, reliant um, or their, cost, their regular audiences may be um, conscious on sustainability or they might be sort of conscious on uh, the environmental aspects of COVID-19 tends to be uh, well spoken about nowadays and people are complying a lot with, well, hopefully they are with the regulations. Um, so maybe you can, you know, educate your audiences or put a post out there about the, the virus and, you know, they tend to, you can, they tend to engage with that more as well. And, and again, you can, what will give you more emphasis and more backing will be going back to that data and just checking, okay, this is performing really well. Um, I can certainly, certainly push out more content like this out. Yeah. Okay. and collecting information uh, as well on, on strengths and weaknesses uh, and, and potential strategies that they're using, yeah? Uh, so you, you, you've got to be very sort of, you, you do a, a lot of uh, digging and understanding of your audiences uh, and also using information that is gathered from, um, gathered from predictive data. So your, your audiences can certainly see um, you know, your audiences can see what your competitors are doing. You need to do your competitor analysis to be have a competitive advantage or a share of voice in that particular market. And that's pestle analysis. Um, now, with the SWOT analysis, it's a lot, little bit similar um, where you would certainly, S, S stands for the strength. Um, and what you could certainly do is, again, go in depth by the products they're pushing out, the resources that they're using, and try to do something similar, yeah? Um, so for instance, that might be a social media post or a, 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 a particular a competition that they're running. Can you maybe you can do a similar competition? Uh, people like uh, something that causes excitement and engagement. Uh, so certainly do something similar at, or try and obviously get some of their uh, followers to join your organization as well yeah um and 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 also area of uh so weaknesses 
it's crucial for you to identify their weaknesses so you can certainly uh, uncover them and then use them to your advantage yeah and also market insights so you can gain further market insights by census data uh, social media data um, well data that is also published on public uh, on the public domain which is like governmental websites um, and certainly uh, data is always published by many organizations uh, so you can refer to back to that which can give you further emphasis on your campaign so how you can when you're planning you will know exactly what to do yeah and, and threats as well it's a big thing as well um new new threats new entities that can join that market you gotta be really wary of them and try and sort of um find ways to overcome them uh, because within social media you're not just competing about against your own competitors when you're operating in a similar market you're competing competing against the, the followers uh, the, the the online um influencers online uh, that got, got over millions of followers uh, they've got you know uh, you know the the footballers or the film film stars online those are just know that they are your competitors you're all in one market you're all on one platform so again they're like your competitors and they've got followings all around the world if you want to get similar followings you need to do something similar to what they're doing or either better um because if your the audience are enjoying it then you do something similar um, or either differentiate into a different market uh, and certainly differentiation will give you maybe a, a competitor and a, a competitor advantage yeah okay um next slide please uh, ben okay so what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to put you in, in groups um Ben, if you can do that, um, you know, what we're going to, what I would like you guys all to do is to just in groups, just to discuss in your groups, your, your company's strengths and weaknesses uh, in terms of the effectiveness uh, to leverage your social community. Yeah. Uh, make small bullet points of small ideas, what you can think of. Um, and then also discuss potential uh, content ideas for your brands. Um, so some ideas that you can think of from the top of your head uh, and then and certainly evaluate the scalability of your stra uh, strategies uh, suggested in this workshop so you can refer back to previous workshops and then and also how might you facilitate and leverage your ratings so and your reviews of your products and services so that will be the reviews that have been made by consumers and uh, you know regular followers on your content how are they engaging with it reviews ratings will be an emojis uh but emojis or or certainly comments and uh, those again again as known as reviews so how could you certainly analyze that so we'll put you in groups and have a conversation uh how you could do that um and certainly maybe integrate that into your day-to-day -day activities guys yeah so i think ben what you if you could certainly put everybody into groups so i think we've got about one two one um so if any of you want to obviously volunteer to tell me some of your um, findings uh feel free to do so uh it's coming at any time if not i was obviously i'll pick somebody uh at random Okay, so I'll pick somebody. Um, I'll if I can pick on Oliver, if that's okay. If you can share some uh, some pros and cons, uh, uh, you know, some of the questions, I refer to them, please. Uh, Thank you. I believe you maybe chose the wrong person because I play back a memory, but we did talk about um, how to maybe get people to engage within within your company. Mm um like how to make it reliable and so like you that people the, your customers essentially see that you are being responsive to their questions inquiries and all that so you can have like 
Q&A sessions with them. Say, hey guys, during those hours, I'm gonna be answering questions on like Twitter or Facebook. Let, like, let me know. Um, yeah, let me know what uh, you want. Yeah, and I'll respond to the questions. Mm -hmm. um, like we talked about how you can uh, ask people to review your, co your company, like a lot of companies do. And they say, oh, if you review us, you might be, you, you can enter um, to like, get a prize essentially. Yeah. Um, so uh, that might work for people, but we, we said that not a lot of people enter it because we don't even see people who win those prizes. Mm -hmm. So if like companies may be shown on their websites, oh, hey, we actually, so this is a person who won, this is like a physical person who won the prize. People will be more prone to actually enter it. Yeah. I feel like, um, yeah, I think if people from my group want to join in, that'd be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I like your, uh, what you said there. Absolutely, to recognize um, the person that's won a prize, uh, you've put them into a competition, uh, recognizing how uh, they've done. Uh, just as a follow up, I think that's a really good idea um, because you know your audiences want to regularly communicate with your company and you that gives them the opportunity uh to leave comments reactions uh all the uh, what you would like them to do is to do that regularly um does anybody else want to come in and uh, yeah give a, a an answer uh, or share an idea feel free to do so um, and one of the other things you mentioned was just making sure that we reply back to any engagement that we do have, just to show that there there is a human side to the company. Like there are people behind these screens that do communicate back. So if you have questions, somebody will reply. Um, um, oh, and then advertising like our testimonials or reviews. So when we, when we get in more reviews over time, then making them into like a slideshow that you could schedule maybe monthly or if there's something specific that you're advertising or recruiting for or trying to raise money for. So for example, if you're trying to raise money for like technology, so people have access to laptops, you could get quotes like from case studies of people saying how it's benefited them. So you train it in a good light to encourage more people like, you know, it's good, join in. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I think that's a really good idea. Um, you're obviously giving the opportunity to your audiences to participate in a project and recognizing it through carousels uh, is really good because uh, you can educate your organizations uh, and you can regularly, you know, give recognition to somebody that's particularly won a prize or a testimonial or a case study on a, a, an employee or a volunteer um, will give more background on your organization uh, because they're your physical brand assets. Yeah. So we'll go in depth um, with that. Um, but thank you very much, guys. It was really good ideas uh, for you all. Thank, well done for all having, uh, engaging with yourselves and working in groups. Um, and Oliver, thank you. And Tara, thank you very much uh, for you guys. Does anybody else want to come in uh, just before we move on uh, and, and share some ideas? Uh, if not, uh, we will carry, carry on. Okay, uh, so what we'll do is we'll carry on. Um, and then if we can go into the next slide, please. So now we will be obviously discussing how to build a strategy for campaign planning. Um, now marketing, to figure out a marketing strategy um, is crucial for you guys to have a, a plan that brings an organization's marketing goals um, into fruition. Um, now, you can have a further discussion with your line manager or your, obviously your lead on a particular project to identify what that particular outcomes and uh, for that particular project is. Uh, that will give you more of an idea on what they may want to see in the marketing activity. So you, will you would like to have that regular dialogue, that regular communication with 
um, you know, uh, you know, managers or uh, mentors within your organization um, so that you can uh, fulfill their outcomes, their objectives uh, through marketing activities and uh, communications. Um, campaign targeting, so, so you can certainly identify campaign targeting strategy, uh, identifying what specific demographic, so demographic meaning what age group you want to target. Um, so are they, is, are they 25 to 34 year olds, are they 35 to 44 year olds? And if you actually look at Instagram or Facebook insights, they will give you a clear idea on what age demographics are watching your content, yeah? So, you know, if you have an age demographic that, you know, if or women, male or female that are watching your content, um, you would need to identify areas where you could certainly regularly communicate out to them um, and what they tend to engage with the most. I know I keep emphasizing on this, but I want it to resonate with you all and how you could certainly, um, you know, manage within the market, uh, gain a, a competitive advantage. Uh, and certainly the way you do that is referring that certainly uh, to that uh, to the data, how you're performing, uh, targeting, considering also uh, going, referring back to your actual ways of um, picking out ideas um, and using that to facilitate uh, regular communications to your audiences. Okay, so next slide, please, Ben. Thank you. Okay, now also the ways you can obviously do set objectives are really clear. Um, you can also use um, SOSTAC. SOSTAC um, is a marketing framework developed by uh, P.R. Smith, who's an academic theorist. Um, SOSTAC is, stands for uh, Situation, uh, Objective, um, Situation Strategy, uh, T for um, top tactics, A for action, and C for control. And um, so you can certainly look at go in depth with SOSTAC um, and certainly use that um, to give you further understanding on how you could certainly bring into uh, consideration that uh, SOSTAC model. Yeah. You can also, when you're doing a, a certain your objectives, you can certainly look at the seven P's in marketing. Um, the first of all will be uh, the process, the product, the place, price, promotion, um, pr uh, the process, the uh, physical place, and, and, and also the procedure. Now, th these seven P's in marketing have been developed further to give you guidance on how you could certainly pick your objective. So that will give you more of an idea on how you can uh, target out to your audiences. Yeah. And, uh, and, and and with that, with that as being said, um, smart objectives enable all you uh, to better understand how you can determine your communication object objectives. Um, so you can certainly do this by following these questions. Yeah. Um, so these questions that, that so S being specific, so state your process of marketing business objectives. Um, so your business outcome. So you look at your website, your company website. What is the mission? What is the vision? Um, and then referring to that, yeah, to pick your objectives. Yeah. Um, and also measuring. Um, how will you know if you've met your objectives? Um, you can do that by looking at the data. That will help you determine if you've met what you've objective objected to do. Um, or has has there been an increase in subscriptions? Um, so yeah, and then and evaluating it, how you could potentially um, referring back to it, and this is this is a linear way of re re regularly um, communicating and regularly having a strategic um, and yeah strategic way of communicating and planning. Um, a as well for achievable. So your objectives must be reasonable and uh, you know achievable. Uh, so you might want to maybe, if you want to make it more realistic, um, you know, you can, you have to uh, identify your brand ambassadors, your resources, so your colleagues are going to be your actual, you know, they're going to be at your disposal. So having regular conversations, having focus groups, 
on particular desire, having focus groups, having questionnaires, you know, having questions ready, you know, it, it, discussing meetings, you know, identifying, you know, what you guys really want to work on, uh, what directions you want to take, like brainstorming, yeah, uh, because when you do that, you have a collective idea uh, on what you want to do together, and it will give you all a sort of certainly you can have that dialogue and uh, it, it makes the process a lot more um, it, it makes the process a lot more sort of and, and enjoyable um, and, 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 and pleasant you know in a way because you've already had that dialogue and regularly you're communicating with each other timing is obviously crucial by setting a time on it uh, so you don't so you work towards targets uh, if you're setting yourself objectives so within marketing you've got to be very specific um because you you again you you you're competing in a market with other marketers uh, other large businesses large brands and they're regularly automating their content obviously you will try and do something similar to have to show how well you are operating in the market okay um next slide please ben So, so how to conduct uh, media planning is by selecting the most appropriate media channel, yeah? So by now, hopefully you would have determined what media channels you want to be on and how often you want to be obviously on there. So you should also consider many other factors as well. So your preferences of your audience. So choosing the channels that effectively the ones they're engaging with the most. So that by integrating those channels, um, you, you have a greater, um, and, you know, greater way of communicating out. So, for example, TV advertising increases direct mail responses, um, and because the adverts that you're putting out, you know, if you don't, because you're a small organization, you want to have a large budget, like many massive organizations have, where they can spend massive amounts of millions on a tv advert that will go nationally uh, on, on 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 platforms so by, by improving uh, that communication that will mean that more direct mail will be going out um social media improved seo rankings as well like i've emphasized on previously um so there's many other ways of communicating out to audiences um now, performance, you should evaluate, your, you know, regularly your performance. So referring back to insights, data, um, and, and understanding how, you know, what's converting and what needs more work on, um, and also your cost. Um, if you're current, kindly, currently like organic, um, your content isn't sort of paid, um, it, it isn't, uh, you don't put a specific in investment in your packages, uh, in your adverts, then maybe you will need to analyze people's uh, responses um, and also analyze that, uh, try and identify a great uh, a testing framework, you know, by understanding a better resource for your customers. Now uh, that will give you a clearer idea on future projects and future campaigns you want to you want to have yeah so if we can move on to the next slide okay uh ben thank you now in terms of timing um the, the timing is crucial so how to better connect with your customers at real time so like i say um you know the social media is always on 24 7 uh, many organizations are automated content in advance, they're advertising regularly. Now, by providing the right messages to your audiences and the right channels, um, that this will give you more relevant effectiveness to your uh, customers. So the real-time digital marketing offers the potential for more insights, yeah? Uh, contact customers um, and re regularly um, you know, having adverts created for your audiences. So whether that be a video, uh, whether that be a poll, um, whether that be a, you know, a, a Q and A, maybe like Oliver says before, 
we can use those uh, and that will give you more of a chance to get to know your audiences even though if they don't engage then you can use other strategies uh, to engage with them um, certainly analyzing the, your reactions on your posts um, again this is all analytical framework um, and certainly by being more of an analyst you will think more as a marketer uh, and, and, and certainly be also you'll be into your you go into your customer's shoes because by sitting in your customer's shoes uh, you will know exactly what they like and what they don't like so then your activities and your communications will show for that okay so ne next slide please ben now for particularly for testing frameworks yeah you can use maybe a and b split testing yeah uh, although a and b split testing is uh, you can use it you have the option to use it on facebook you have to investigate that in detail and go into it and find the testing framework um but the way you do a and b split testing you have two design variants and you test them both so you put one out one day and then the other the other the other day two design variants and you analyze the data which one is performing most and which one is getting the more sort of reaction so whether that be a video or a picture or a survey you have to test them um so there will be two of the same things, so two of the same pictures or two of the same similar videos, but you will see which one pretends to perform the most. Um, certainly do that. Um, and then look at the data and determine what's performing the most. Um, by doing this uh, you know, strategic process, um, you certainly will be um, more of, well, a lot more strategic and a lot more tactful with your approach. Now, again, there's also multivariant testing. So testing multiple variants, not just two, but multiple, four to five, um, or, either, or either more, yeah? Um, so regularly, uh, uh, this allows you to determine different variants, different variables at the same time, and analyzing the interactions of your consumers. Um, so for instance, the headline, that you put up with the post. Um, maybe you put three or four different images. The CTA, which stands for call to action, to what you want your consumers to do. You can analyze that or see, find out the winning combination. You could certainly, by testing regularly, you'll find the right formula. When you find the right formula, you're, 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 that, that certainly will give you your um your strategic formula to regularly communicate out to your audiences and then when you have that combination then you're you're well within on your way to certainly well bringing in more revenue bringing in more followings to your brand and your to your organization yeah and uh, next slide please ben Okay, so this is uh, another one. So we call this one the test learn cycle. Um, so the test learn cycle, the way it works, it's very, it's it's five different methods. So you do testing, you analyze, you learn from your analysis, you improve, and then you implement. Very straightforward. Um, and if you follow this process, you'll be very, very, um, uh, you'll be very systematic. Uh, it's a continuous circle, uh, circle of improvement. And if you follow this process regularly, uh, you start, you know, um, you prioritizing and identifying problems. And, and then sort of certainly for in, improving future campaigns um, and then justifying your campaigns um, and for further improvement. So up to 20% of campaigns will be uh, for testing. Uh, with 80% of, of, of rolling, uh, of rollout using the, str the strongest performing creative, yeah? So certainly by testing 20% of your, 20%, this will give you an idea of 80% of what you will be rolling out, yeah? So testing will certainly help you identify the right formula, yeah? This, and, and that is the, how you can identify the winning combination, yeah? 
Okay, so um, what I'm going to do, guys, is uh, we're going to move on to the next slide. But now what I'm going to give you guys is a five minute break uh, before we move on to the next um, slides. So five minutes, you get a, you can get a break for five and then we'll meet back up by um, 12 minutes past. Okay. And this, so at this at this point now we'll obviously be discussing the digital branding, yeah. Um, so next slide, please, Ben. So digital branding it allows you to develop and understand the changing digital brand landscape. Yeah, so you will need to do regular updating, regular auto, regular understanding of your uh, digital brand because your digital brand will will evolve over time. Um, and certainly your branding will evolve over time as well and identify how companies or other companies or other organizations operating in a similar market are performing um, how are they effective um, and, and how they effectively working in that particular market yeah uh, and also you also need to explore the new role of social media in brand communication and advertising now social media is regularly changing and regularly evolving because organizations always need to continue innovating inventing new methods of communication with their audiences and the way you can do that and will stay ahead of the game is by doing that secondary research conducting the primary research by doing the actual physical research of going into the data picking out areas where your audiences are tend to be how they how they're communicating with you and you can further determine how you could continuously um, regularly advertise with them uh, through creatives yeah um, next slide please ben now what is branding okay um so i'll tell you what branding is so branding is the process of creating a unique name and image from a product in the customer's mind, mainly through uh, advertising campaigns, aiming to establish a significant and different, different, uh, different presence in the market that affect the retain loyal customers. So that's what branding stands for, okay? Uh, and that's obviously been advertised by Rick Riesibos, who's an academic theorist, uh, from Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Um, ben, if you can move on to the next slide, uh, that's what digital branding will come into place there. Now, branding is all about creating customer-based brand equity, yeah? So equity is something that's equitable and how you can increase that brand equity is by following this process. And this particular process was developed by Philip Kotler, who's an academic theorist specifically in marketing um, and the CBBE model known as customer based brand equity model is firstly by your brand knowledge. So you need to educate your customers of your brand. Yeah. And how you do that is by creating awareness and brand image. And you, you will certainly do that by regularly building knowledge in your customers of your projects, of your brand, of your what your customers are regularly, um, what they like to see. Um, and you do this, and th this will increase your brand awareness and your brand image over time uh, through camp uh, advertising campaigns, through promotions, building a reputation over time. Yeah. This is how the big technological firms have done over time. Um, I, I there's a lot of big technological firms that have did this for a number of years uh, and, and tried their best to, uh, to, to get to where they have become. Um, for instance, Amazon. Amazon used to be not known by customers 10, 10 or 15 years ago, or it weren't as, as, as well as it's performing today, but regularly they've been automating their content. They've been regularly communicating out with their audiences they have found the right strategy. You could do the same 
uh, but you know you've got to be thinking and uh, you know operating uh, like these big technological firms you may not only be on the same budget we can still do that but following these processes um and and i'm certainly and although it can be a really long process but by bare resiliency there will be some out outcome uh, next slide please ben so what is digital uh, next slide please ben yeah thank you thank you very much what is digital branding? Now I'll tell you what digital branding is. It's, it comes in two different forms. Online, uh, online branding is through blogs, through digital advertising, through mobile apps, websites, and social media, uh, and paid advertising as well, uh, Google AdWords, et cetera. Uh, and that's digital branding. Branding is for instance, through brochures, outdoor, adverts, posters, and also through newspaper ads, that's offline marketing, yeah? So branding enables you to do the following. It enables you to build brand equity, build awareness, build image of the organization, build reputation of the organization, enables your customer to think of your brand and have a brand recall. They will, First thing that comes to your mind of, of the, if you've got a computer project or if you've got a free pro, uh, food project or a free educational project for your audiences, uh, they will, if you put this into their minds from before, they will think of your brand instantly. If you're selling a particular project through campaigns, regular advertising will enable your customer to have brand recall and association as well associating your brand with similar assets okay uh, so if you can uh, move to the next slide please ben uh, that would be brilliant thank you very much now um a bit more theory uh, so what digital branding is is uh, it's a it's brand management it's a brand management tool that uses a combination of internet branding and digital marketing to develop a brand over a range of digital venues including internet-based relationship device-based application or media content yeah and that again by, by rick riesibos uh, you can look at further into him um he's technological uh, academic uh with it specifically within marketing and if you if he can get his book i'll leave you um a link at the bottom of uh, the bottom of this at uh, the last slides where you can have a reading list you can look at the sources and use them uh, further research um if we can move on to the next slide please uh ben thank you very much so digital branding evolution so over the years it's it's evolutionized revolutionized it's changed now we had the red web 2.0 now we have web 3.0 um, and, and what customers are saying is about your brand, you can certainly, that will develop over time as your brand revolutionizes as well. So digital is, it's a, it's a two-way communication. So for instance, if your customer is messaging you, you will need to message back um, and certainly have that communication regularly. And yeah, most communications are through digital media and your customers can certainly leave comments, reviews of your products, push for them to do leave a review through TripAdvisor, Trustpilot. If you set up those pages and the customers are leaving reviews there, then that builds to your credibility. And you can publish that you have a, a rating, a good rating of your products on Trustpilot, for, for instance, um, or regularly doing surveys of your customers of, of projects and and you can publish them and uh, certainly use that for for your you know for your management to look at and certainly you know they would they would like to put bid out for for particular funding then you can help them do that uh, but you need to collect the data for them to use that specifically but there's uh, this again gives you the opportunity to have a real impact in in your role and have a real impact in the organization so next slide, please, Ben. So, um, so digital branding channels are email marketing, social media marketing using 
uh, promoting products and services online, uh, search engine optimization, standing for SEO, uh, just the web, web content, website, ad, uh, web contents. If you have a particular project, you advertise it on your website first, then advertise it on, uh, on, uh, on, advert, uh, on social media. Affiliate marketing, affiliate marketing with other websites through other uh, firms uh, that operate in a similar market but this you will affiliate yourself with them and you will get more sort of, it's another channel for you to get more customers, more clients. Yeah. Uh, okay, next slide please, Ben, thank you. Social media. Now, social media has the greatest impact um, and you can have a massive impact on your customers' engagement uh, and, and obviously you can get more interactions with them for your brand, yeah? So the, the extent to which your brand is recognized uh, by, by, is by how well you sort of try and sort of res, uh, work towards giving them brand recognition, uh, brand recall, uh, associating your products with a particular brand, yeah? So uh, traditional branding is broadcasting uh, at, uh, to you. So through television, through radio, newspaper, that's traditional form of branding. And it also has a two-way form of communication as well. To a radio station, you can call in potentially give your feedback. Um, well, with, with similarly with social media nowadays, you can leave a comment, reaction, etc. cetera. Um, and you have to put, um, try and find the strategy and to do that, uh, regularly testing. Um, and also, certainly doing that for a lengthy period of time so that social media means that you can talk directly with the audiences yeah okay so if we can move on to the next slide please ben i really thank you very much so this is a digital branding uh, building tool the impact on brand equity so you want to have a significant impact on brand equity so social media marketing activities uh, equate to interactions and communications would branch out into two forms Okay, number one being brand equity, which is branches out into brand awareness and brand image. Yeah. And from social media marketing activities, you branch out to brand association. Yeah. And this, if you do this right, you will, this strategy will allow you to build brand equity with your audiences over time. Okay. Uh, so next slide, please, Ben. Thank you. So, uh, so the benefits of the organization is that, you know, your, 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 your customers will be better known. You will know your customers more. Uh, you, you will engage with them regularly. They will gain brand awareness. They may even say, talk to their friends, family about your brand. And um, they may even talk to your friends, family abroad in different countries. Um, this is a, uh, it will allow you to get more feedback. This is a word, form of e-word of mouth, uh, attracting new customers again, creating enhanced strengthening your brand, and also supporting and implementing future marketing activities as well. So your future marketing activities could certainly perform better, yeah? Okay, uh, so next slide please, Ben, thank you very much, thank you. So your social media tools, um, again, uh, Hope you're using these uh, well monthly usage as you can see is, is significant on facebook youtube instagram and um, you know if you have a business then certainly maybe integrate whatsapp um, and certainly having a facebook page twitter account youtube channel and instagram platform will allow you to grow and utilize all social platforms yeah uh, and so these are the current tools and monthly usages as well. They do tend to change regularly as well. Okay, next slide, please, Ben. We will we'll move on um, to the next slide. So if you can move on to the other slide as well. Thank you very much. Okay, so what is mobile marketing? Now, mobile marketing is any marketing activity conducted through a ubiquitous network to which customers are constantly connected using a put personal mobile device, yeah? A lot of customers have telephones nowadays. They use telephones. So this is the best way you can 
you know, communicate out to your audiences. So this is by Andreas Kaplan, professor of marketing at the uh, European Business School. And um, so if you can move on to the next slide, please. So why is mobile, mobile marketing important part of the digital mix? So more than 75% of mobile, 75% uh, of um, smartphones penetrate amongst UK adults. And that's by Ofcom. Mm -hmm. And they've identified that 75, sorry, 95% of smartphone users are, are adults. You certainly want to find areas where you want to sort of adults tend to be ones that, you know, would you would like to convert into customers, paying customers. Um, and one in 10 smartphone users check their devices straight after waking up. So uh, you can certainly have a share of voice of that. Um, mobile search has now overtaken desktop research, um, uh, which is which is now uh, uh, the new normal. Um, and also mobile gives marketers opportunity to uh, serve uh, you know highly targeted customers on a one-to-one -one basis. You can have a one-to-one -one dialogue and one-to-one -one communication with your audiences using location. You know the social networking sites will prioritize your content because based on location. So bear that in mind as well, uh, and certainly do that when when you and bring that into your stream in marketing. Okay, next slide, please, Ben. Uh, so, um, also free video editing apps. Uh, I'll share this with you. Um, so, by 2022, online video uh, will make up more than 82% of all cust uh, consumer internet traffic. So that's that is by by next year. So, you know. Yes, that's a large percentage of advertising and communication is going to be through videos. So videos is going to be crucial to, uh, you know, to create videos to become tech savvy by editing content. It's going to be very crucial for your brand. And um, so, yeah, we can certainly do that. And what, what I will do is um, at the beginning of uh, at the beginning of the next uh, week session, I will discuss with you all all the uh, free video editing apps um, because certainly now we're running over time um, and uh, so what we'll do is now we will go to uh, we'll go to what I'm going to set for you guys. I've set you guys some research to do. So Ben, if we can go to slide number 35. Okay, so guys, uh, I'll send you the slides as well. Um, so please answer the following questions. Again, this is some, some for you guys to do again. Um, I wouldn't advise you all to do it during your working hours and maybe do this out of your working hours if you can. Um, again, this is just give you guys more of a um, knowledge within this uh, particular industry. Um, so yeah, select a social networking sites you are a member of or uh, familiar with. Do consider yourself as a, the way you consider yourself as a fan. Uh, try and you know, think, what do you think as a fan, think, feel, and do? Uh, ideally, you would like your customers to think, feel, and do of something of your brand as well, and try and distinguish them from non-fans. Uh, and how and where do you engage with the, your community? Yeah. So try and answer these questions uh, for next slide, for the next session. Um, and you can, if you want to share your ideas, then we can give you the, I can give you the opportunity, guys, to share your opinions on that as well. So thank you very much for you guys uh, again. Um, again, uh, finally, um, please do follow the E2 Direct and Digital Marketing a Facebook uh, web, a Facebook site. Um, it's on Facebook, so the group is closed. You guys can make your comments there. Any questions you guys have midweek for me, I can, I can always answer them. You can always contact me on email. Um, and certainly you can always add me on Twitter as well. I am on Twitter. Um, and yeah, um, guys, thank you very much. And um, I'll share with you guys the slides again, uh, like I did last week. And so see you next week. And uh, I'll introduce you guys also, um, hopefully next week, to the, um, the E2 CEO, um, who will just give you guys a, a brief talk. 
Um, and yeah, thank you very much again, guys. And uh, see you all next week.